Okay, hello, good evening, uh, former uh, Florida State House, House Representative uh, in District 92, Gwendolyn Clark Reed. She's also uh, uh, a retired school teacher uh, of 13 years in New York. Uh, she spent 10 years at Park Ridge Elementary for a total of 23 years as an age educator, she's a former city of Deerfield Beach commissioner in District 2 from 1993 to 2005, a former Florida State House representative in District 92. I said that early, but I'll say it again. She was the first black representative in District 92, elected uh, representative in District 92, the only city commissioner elected to the State House of Representative she held that District 92 seat from 2008 to 2016. She is the first black elected president of the Broward League of Cities. She's a member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority and still active in the community. So that's an impressive resume there, uh, uh, Miss Gwendolyn Clark Reed and uh, we want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on the Adams Brothers podcast. And uh, uh, we want to thank you uh, for coming on. Well, Daryl, thank you. And you and Wayne, thank you very much for having me. I just want to make one slight correction to uh, that Broward League of Cities notation. Uh -huh. I was the first African-American female. African-American. President female. of that organization back in 2000. So um, I, I just want to be clear that um, that information is correct. Well, thank you very much for that correction. And uh, we thank you very much for that. And um, OK, well, we'll jump right in. We have some questions uh, we want to ask you. And then we'll just let you tell us uh, whatever you have to tell us. And, um, and we'll, just, we'll just chime in. Uh, so the first question that we have for you would be, um, you would like to, to well not it wouldn't it's not really a question you would like to talk about the upcoming august 18th primary election and the process so uh tell everybody tell our, our, everybody that's watching out there uh what information you have about the upcoming august 18th election well first of all thank you daryl and um, i want to say that july 20th is a very important date uh, you must be registered by July 20th if you intend to vote in the primary elections. Right. And what people don't seem to understand is that primary elections are party specific. That means you either have to be a Democrat or a Republican. Um, NPAs will be allowed to vote on certain issues. But those, issues, those candidates that are running in a particular party, you will not be able to vote for them if you are not a registered Democrat or Republican. I know people get very confused about that. And um, they say, I don't see this one on my ballot or I don't see the other one on my ballot. No, it's because of your party affiliation. So that is something that you can correct uh, by July 20th by going on the Supervisor of Elections website or calling the office and uh, telling them that you want to change your party affiliation and they will guide you through the process of doing that. And that's the Broward uh, County Supervisors of Elections? The Broward County. This is all the information I'm giving you today is only for Broward County. Okay. If you are in Palm Beach County or Monroe County or another county, you will have to check with your supervisor of elections in that particular county. Thank you for But the information out. I'm giving you today is specific to Broward County. Um, there is an election in Broward County that's considered a universal election. That means that there was no person from uh, the opposing party of the candidate that uh, signed up to run in this particular seat. And that is Senate District 33, where the uh, incumbent is uh, Senator Perry Thurston. 
If you are an NPA, that's a non-party affiliate, you will see his election on your ballot that you receive because of the status of universal um, elections that we now have in the state of Florida. So along with the judge candidates who are nonpartisan candidates, who everybody will get to vote for, you will see this universal um, election for Senator Perry Thurston. So remember, you must be in a party if you want to vote for the sheriff or the supervisor of elections or the state representatives or uh, any other local candidates. Well, no, the state representatives, Congress, those elections are party specific. So you must be in a party in order to be able to get a ballot to vote for those candidates. Okay. Uh, I think I've made that clear. If there are any questions, you know, anybody will have where people can um, call me and um, ask about uh, specific uh, questions. Uh, this is not endorsing any candidates. This is just giving information so that you as a voter will be able to make a decision about whom you want to vote for. And it's very important. I know we've had a lot of Zoom candidate forums, and I'm sure you've had some candidates on your other uh, podcasts. Um, just want to let folks know that each individual has a right to make up his or her mind as to for whom they want to vote. I know that, you know, we have folks who are working for candidates and you know they are, that's their job to get out and push their candidate. Yes. But you as a voter, you have the right to decide to whom you want to vote for. Wayne, I saw your light come on. I didn't know whether you wanted to say something to me. I was just agreeing with you. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. So as far as uh, what's now happening, you are now starting to receive your vote by mail ballots. Those ballots, uh, some people have gotten them over the weekend, got them last week and uh, have called me uh, in reference to them. Please, you have the opportunity with vote by mail and I encourage everyone with this pandemic that we have, uh, with the, the COVID-19, that the vote by mail process is a secure process. Your ballot will be counted if you get it to the supervisor of elections office by 7 p.m. on election day. Now this year they are allowing um, two drop-off sites for those ballots. You can drop your vote by mail ballot at the government center at the supervisor of elections office there which is down in fort lauderdale at the government center mm -hmm. or you can drop it off at the lauder hill uh supervisor of elections office that's in the lauder hill mall these are 24 hour uh, drop off sites. There are boxes that are available 24 seven that you can drop off your vote by mail ballot if you do not mail it back in. Um, if you have any questions about your, your ballot or any questions regarding how to get a ballot, you ought to call 954-357 seven zero five zero or nine five four three five seven seven zero five five i got information yesterday that deerfield is very much lagging in applying for the absentee ballots or vote by mail folks particularly in the in the african-american community we must be up on our game as far as voting. We need to request that absentee ballot. And when we get it, fill it out and return it. 
it's very important that when you return, before you return your ballot, that you sign that ballot, that you sign the, the envelope that you will be returning your ballot in. Um, I hope that some of you who have already changed your signatures, if your signatures have somehow changed from the previous elections, you have the opportunity until July 20th to fill out a new card with a signature change so that you, when they match your signature with your vote by mail ballot, it will be okay. That's very important for our seniors in particular because since the last election, some of us may have become disabled in certain ways and our signature, we don't sign our name the same way as we did before. But so it's very important that you have your signature on file at the Supervisor of Elections office. You guys can stop me whenever you want if you got questions. So. No, I mean you're going you're going you're going along fine. Uh you know, if I have any questions or Wayne have any questions, we'll we'll jump right in and, okay. and ask you. Okay. We're all gonna right. let you provide them with all the info that you have, you know. Yes, <laughs> and um the what's new is of course the uh twenty-four hour drop off. We never had that before. Uh, that in my recollection, um, that we had a place that we could go 24 seven and drop off our ballots. They are providing that. Well, let, you, me, uh, let me ask you one question, Ms. Reed, before I, I do have one question, not to yeah. cut you off, um, but why is Deerfield lagging behind in, with absentee ballots? I don't know. Um, I don't know. You know, it's very difficult now with the virus uh, to get out and, you know, go door to door to people as, as previously, you know, some folks have been doing in order to make sure that the vote by mail ballots were requested and uh, then, you know, when they got them. Uh, it, the process of getting people to uh, ask for those ballots and get them mailed to them um, that's what has, has changed because we used, you know, we could do voter registration in the park. We could have, um, you know, gatherings where we would have people come and make sure that they uh, did that. You know, with the, with the COVID-19, all of that is out the window, as one might say. We aren't able to do that. So that's why, um, you know, this podcast and, and other people talking you know, to people having other Zoom meetings and expressing that, you know, within your family, just ask your family members, you know, are you registered to vote? Or have you requested a an, an, uh, vote by mail ballot? Um, those are, that's very, very important. Just that one-to-one -one contact with family members, uh, getting them to register and to request the absentee ballot. So it's, it's really been the fact that, you know, we don't have the observer anymore to, you know, get out in the community with it. It's only uh, events like this that we're, that we're, that I'm talking to you and having this recorded so that others can get the message that we will be able to hopefully bring that number up before July 20th. And remember that the July 20th uh, voter registration date is only for the primary election. Uh, after August 18th, there will be another cutoff date for the November election. Because you know, the books will close on July 20th. They close 30 days prior to the election. And the election is August 18th. So on the books will be closed during that time. August 19th, the books will reopen until a period in uh, October, and I'm not sure of that October date, that you will be able to register and vote in the November election. So hopefully I'll be able to come back on and tell you about that um, after the um, August primary. primary. Right. I got one question too. Sure. Uh, the signatures, what if the signature don't match up? What will, what action will they take? Because I know a lot of people are very skeptical about the 
uh, vote by mail. And I think that was one of the things they were concerned about was the signatures. Cause most, a lot of people like me, I signed up when I was in high school. Right. So you can remember what signature I put on there and that was back in 1984. Yes, and that, that's exactly what I'm talking about, uh, Wayne. Um, you, needed, you need to re-register as one might say, so that the signature that appears on the um, voter on your mail-in ballot will match up. If you think that your signature has changed that much, that there's that, if you can see that much of a difference in your signature, then right. you know what how you your, what your voter registration is showing. So you need to re you know do another application, and I think there's a place on there that says. Uh, change the signature or new signature and fill that out and uh, sign that and get it in before okay. July 20th. If you want to vote in the vote by mail um, by for the primary. Okay, thank you. Yes, I'm going to go in and vote. I'm, I don't want to take that chance. Uh, I'll wear my mask and just go in and, and vote in person. Okay. Uh, um, uh, I know that a lot of people feel the same way that you do. Uh, expect to, you know, be online for a little while. Uh, carry you some water. Get <laughs> maybe get you a little folding chair, uh, because we've been told that there will the lines at the um, polling places will be very lengthy uh, okay. for those persons who decide to go in and uh, vote uh, at the polling booth. I I too love to go in the polling booth yeah. myself. But uh, with the pandemic and, uh, you know, Miss Reed is not as young as she used to be, <laughs> I'm going to be voting by mail this, yeah. this, uh, this election. And one other question to former state rep. Uh, do, is there any talks or uh, about having the early voting a lot earlier and a lot longer since the pandemic? Like, say like, I, I think they do it like two weeks. How about opening it up for the general election, like maybe a month ahead of time to give people enough time? Have there been any talks that you know of or any discussions about having a longer early voting because of the pandemic and the, the lines that it might call? Um, I did hear something early on about about that, uh, Wayne, but I have not um, heard anything about, you know, changing what they have in place now. And uh, speaking about that early voting, there are going to be 32 um, voting sites, early voting sites. And some of your polling places may be changed um, because of the pandemic and having to have the space that's needed um, with the CDC uh, regulations and everything. So some of us may be um, having our polling places uh, changed due to the pandemic. Um, <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's something that we have to be aware of. And if that has, was the case, you should have gotten something from the supervisor of elections office or very shortly be getting something from the supervisor of elections office telling you about where your new voting uh, site is going to be. I don't know if we're going to have early voting um, in Deerfield. Um, I did not, uh, I have not checked the sites, but I will be speaking with um, someone in reference to that, finding out, you know, will we be having one or will we have to go someplace else to do um, early voting. Normally it's down at the uh, EPAT Larkin Center in Pompano. Yes, that's where we uh, we had um, the last time, uh, I think, Daryl. Right. Um, but we were always trying to maintain that one that we had at Ovita McKeithen so that, uh, you know, people up here in the North area um, would be able to uh, just come over here and vote. Because, you know, we think of just Deerfield when we talk about the early voting sites, but no people from Coral Springs, from, you know, Coconut Creek, which is so close, and uh, people over Hillsborough Mile, you know, it, it's uh, convenient. That site was convenient for a lot of 
other people to come and use as well. So uh, I don't know, as I said just yet, I will be checking on that um, with the early voting site. Uh, where will it be? So um, just want to, to make sure that um, everyone is clear on, um, on the voting. And um, I tried to find out yesterday at a meeting uh, about the sample ballot. You know, we used to get a sample ballot mailed to us. And I, it, to my opinion is that one should have been mailed to everyone uh, who's a voter uh, this time around because of the pandemic and, uh, you know, the lack of information that uh, has been getting out. But I just want to encourage everybody um, to, you know, get registered by the 20th, uh, request that vote by mail ballot. It is secure. Or if you want to go to the polling place, but you must be registered and you must be registered in a party if you want to vote for the entire ballot, starting with the US Congress and going on uh, down the ballot. So um, one thing I want to express really, and one race that I am particularly uh, concerned about uh, I'm concerned about all of them, but in this time of our social justice uh, movement, I'm concerned about the state attorney's office and the criminal justice um, system. I'm very, very concerned. I know people are concerned about the police departments and what happens and who gets arrested and what have you, but it's what happens after that person is arrested that is of most importance to us. Absolutely. So when we are looking at those candidates who are in the state attorneys, running for the state attorney, there are questions that, you know, we need to have answers to as to um, who will be making the decisions about particularly our juveniles uh, being tried as adults, uh, you know, as far as I knew, there was one person down in that state attorney's office that was kind of, you know, making those decisions. And I, I really think that there should be a panel of people put together to make those decisions about when we're talking about our juveniles. Um, and knowing that um, the civil citation program which the bill was that I carried in the state legislature when I was there, that that civil citation is being used and used by all, everyone, all of the uh, law enforcement in this uh, county. Um, I know it's being used by other counties and every law enforcement agency in Broward County should be using, we should be pushing for them to be using that civil citation program when it comes to minor offenses or that we are locking folks up for and uh, taking up space in our jails. And right now with this COVID, we uh, do not need to expose any more people to uh, this, this dread disease. I want to um, talk about the census. And that was something that uh, I, I failed to mention to you, this, you know, pre previously prior to coming on. It's okay. We can talk about it. This is the most important thing that we can do right now. Everybody got a form mailed to them. Um, they could go online and fill it out. It takes 10 minutes. We're not asking for your social security number or anything else. It's just to find out how many people are in the city of Deerfield Beach and how we get our monies allocated from the federal government and the state government based on the population that is here in this city. Uh, we talk about the community development block grant funds. Those funds are based on the number of residents that we have living in this city. We're not asking if you're legal or how you got here. We're just knowing that you are here and you're using our services. 
You're using our fire department. You're using our ambulances. You're using our hospitals. So in order that we have enough funds coming to the various agencies to operate these uh, agencies, we have to know how many people are here. And we have to know the needs so that we know the needs of those people. So I'm asking everyone to please take 10 minutes and fill out the census form. You can go online and do it, or you can do it with the one that was mailed to your home. It, you know, when we talk about how come we don't have this person representing us in Congress and how come we don't have state representatives from this area, those district lines, when we draw the lines for saying how many people are in a particular district that is needed to be represented, can we draw a district or is it possible that there should be a district where the community has more input and someone from that community can be elected to that district? We have to think about how our U.S. Uh, Congress, you know, when we have someone who lives in who knows where, but it, the district is drawn so that it covers us, but we're not able to participate as far as getting someone like us elected. So th this census, um, you know, is very, very important because that's where they count the number of folks in, they're gonna put in the district and what that district will look like. Um, the state house seat that we have now, we have in district 92, hopefully that district will continue to be drawn in a manner that an African American can represent the district in the state house. But hey, if you folks don't answer the census and they have to pull those number of people uh, that they need to make up the district and it shows another population overwhelmingly, that population may be able to elect someone from their demographics to represent. Absolutely. So it, it's very important. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely uh, pressing on everyone to please uh, answer the census. And I'm glad you put that out there for everyone to uh to know, so everyone would know, I should say, um, about the census and uh, getting out and filling out that form and how they draw up the district district lines. So that's very important, you know, if they take us with, uh, redraw the district lines and move it north or south or east or west, and that takes a whole lot of uh, the black community out of that equation. So, uh, I'm glad you 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 brought that up so people could yes. understand how how it's how we're being how when you don't see a black face in district 92 why it's being done. Right. And Daryl, you know, um the fact that when I was in the legislature I served on the redistricting committee for the state at that time in 2010 when we had the census and then 2012 by 2012 we had drawn new lines for representation and people that had represented us before or we thought were going to be in our district hey they were in our our district we look at um you know i know a lot of it was uh, was folks were concerned that al c hastings our, was our congressman and then all of a sudden it was ted deutsch right and this is this is what happens when right. people don't answer the census and when they look at the the tracks and they're pulling in the numbers that they need to make up a district. Um, this is what happens. This is this is how how you lose representation uh, that you really uh, wanted to keep. Right. So uh, it's important. It's it's I, important. I also heard you ask a question the other night during the city commission meeting, which I thought was very important. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I think I remember hearing you asking about the census and would would we could we add another uh, commissioner or whatever here and yes. there? Yes, and that's that's yes. exactly right, Dar uh, that way. That's what that census tells you. Um, you know that there's a certain number of commissioners, a number that makes up a district, 
And if this city has grown, the population, you know, we know the population, does this allow us to have another seat on the city commission? And I was asking it in reference to the fact that they were talking about selecting um, a developer, uh, a not developer, um, uh, yeah, for the the re, re um, configuration, the uh, yeah, of of city hall and mm -hmm. redoing city hall, so that they're redoing it, and we can, if we knew, you know, we're looking for further into the future, would we, uh, you know, should we allow that dais to look the way it looks? But should it be expanded in some manner that if we do, uh, you know, have to get another commissioner, we don't have to go through redoing the whole, uh, doing City Hall again, that we have made accommodations that if this does become effective, we already, uh, you know, are there. Um, the mayor understood what I was asking. Right. Yeah, very, 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 very well. Yeah, he you could tell he wasn't too receptive towards it, though. No, uh, because, uh, you know, as he said, this wasn't an issue that was facing um, what the, was being discussed in this item on the agenda. Uh, that mm -hmm. didn't fit in there right there. Well, um, as we move forward, uh, I will continue to ask the question. Um, I thought that was very, a very good question. Uh, our dollars, remember. Folks are, you know, they take the, it, it's so lightly. I, th I, I, I I'm, I'm just concerned that there's money um, that for District 2, that District 2 can access, but we have to have more people at the table and more people speaking up about how these dollars are, are being spent. I mean, yeah. just the mere fact, you know, when we look at what happened, <laughs> let's take the garbage and the recycling. Now everything goes in one barrel. They, right. you know, there's no more separation of 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 my blue bot, my blue barrel and my brown barrel. I I was confused on it myself until you know I put both of them out and only the brown one got picked up and mm -hmm. dumped. So I left the blue one, and the next time they dumped the blue one on a regular garbage day. So now I understand the process, and uh, other folks, uh, uh, I guess, are going to get it too because I still see people putting out two barrels, two, you know, two two cans. Right. But these are things that you know we have to understand, and we have to understand why this is happening, and what effect it you know it, it will have on us um i noticed also that um in the city commission you know there was talk of of certain areas the redevelopment the when uh commissioner preston was talking about the cra dollars and the redevelopment of 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 the area what has happened in deerfield is that there's so much confusion about what can go on Dixie Highway, what can't go on Dixie Highway. People that own the properties there, uh, you know, they have to understand. And as the mayor said, and, and I don't know if you guys remember when the mayor ran for office, he said that there was a possibility of some gentrification coming through District 2. And that's when, you know, if it gets to the point where the city, you know, says, well, okay, we've given this community long enough to decide what they want to do. They haven't decided what they want to do, so we're going to decide for them. And they will come through, and although they say they don't want to use eminent domain, they will use it if they have to, in order to redevelop along Dixie Highway. So I, I, I'm really hoping that we have some meetings here uh, and I don't know why we can't have Zoom community meetings right. um, and and discuss this. And and they're talking about bringing in the the institute um, to meet with them to start this you know process. I hope that we get folks out. We need to get we we'll need to get folks out 
however they're going to have those meetings, if they're going to be Zoom meetings or meetings um, with distancing uh, or what have you. But uh, I'm, tell I'm telling everybody, you know, they'll come to a point where the city will say, hey, we've given you guys long enough to decide what you're going to do. And now you haven't made that decision, so we're going to make it for you. So these are the things that we have to be very cognizant of. And when I don't see people on the city commission meeting, um, even though they're Zoomed, and I know it's kind of technically challenging for some of our folks to understand how to use this Zoom, um, those who do, and you know, just get one of your grandchildren. <laughs> they know how to use it. All right. uh, and you know, you hook me up to the city commission meeting. That's all, and they will surely hook you right up. Absolutely. And uh, you know, you'll be able to uh, participate. Uh, I think one of the reasons why a lot of people haven't made up their mind is because, I mean, you have a lot of people calling and with offers to buy up the property along that Dixie quarter, but they're coming in with low prices. And uh, I, I believe a lot of people would sell their property and be open to, you know, the developers developing it, but they're trying to lowball the, uh, the property owners along that, that, that quarter there. Well, and I, I, I they know want Darryl, it, they have to pay for it. Yeah, Daryl. And this, I thought that um, when uh, Commissioner Battle was on the dais, that there was some movement to do appraisals of those properties. Uh, that there was a, a, some monies that were available to do the appraisals uh, of the properties along that, that corridor. Um, I don't know whether that took place or, or, or did that happen, or if not, we may need to, when the L Urban uh, Land Institute comes in, tell, you know, that's something that needs to be done. Right. Because we, we know we know several people that 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 live along that that from from Hillsboro down Dixie that they personally that they've sold their properties and then we know what they pretty much what they went for and uh, we know what the going price for at least three or four of those properties uh, is going for so the prices that they call and they offer is shameful so that's why a lot of it a lot of uh, why it's not being developed and the properties aren't being sold is because the offers that they're giving to the property owners is shameful. And that's, and that's social justice. That's, that's a part of social justice. When you don't treat me the same way you would treat somebody else and you don't treat my property the, right. value, the same way you treat others, right. that has a lot to do with, they talk about the protests, that's in social justice, that's a part of it. And that's, that's something that, that uh, folks need to understand. Right. Um, you're going to go across the track and, and give them twice as much as you're going to give me? Uh, no, no, that, right. that's not, that's not going to work. Because our father, also, our father owns property along that quarter. And I can tell you personally from having a conversation with my dad uh, that some of the offers he's, he's gotten, he's laughed at them. You know, because of uh, the the offers that he he's gotten in the past and continues to get, you know, so yes, yes, that has a lot to do with it. Yes, and I, and, and and that needs to be known. Um, you know, the 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 city needs to understand that um, that if you are want us to develop and whatnot, or you want us to be able, if we're not going to develop to sell to developers, that they need to come in and be honest with us and to to treat us the same way that they treat the other folks. And also too, I saw some emails where city officials are blaming the property, property owners for wanting to lease their property. Uh, and I also saw an email where some of the politicians are trying to blame you when you were Commissioner Reed and Commissioner Portier for the lack of progress, which I don't believe that not one bit. I mean, they might say a lot of other stuff, but I don't believe that, you know, because you can't make a property owner sell their property. And so I don't know. I saw the email. So I saw what they were trying to blame you and Commissioner Portier for no for the, the progress on Dixie, which I didn't buy it. And let, and let me just say this to you, uh, uh, Wayne and Daryl, and folks that are, are watching. When I was a commissioner, 
we wanted to put a CRA. Rodney, uh, Rodney, I can't re think, remember Rodney's last Johnson? name. Johnson, was it Johnson? I, no, no, that's early. Yeah. Rodney Smith. Smith. Ro yes, Rodney was came to this community when he was the director and he wanted to do a CRA. And at that time, he was told by the community that they were not interested in doing CRA. So that's how come District 2 does not have a CRA. While I was on the commission, I established the Community Development Corporation, Westside Businessmen. Westside Businessmen was the designated uh, CDC for District 2. For some reason or the other, that fell apart. I don't know uh, what happened uh, with the people who were um, on the board. Uh, for some reason, you just couldn't get folks to understand what the CDC was all about. So the other night when I saw on um, the presentation uh, that what could happen in the district, I see they're talking about community development corporations again. As a, as a vehicle for developing um, along Dixie Highway and in the community. What has to happen is when you come to the community, there has to be full education, understanding, and people who sit on the boards of these particular corporations have to understand this is something that's not going to put money in their pocket. It's money that's going to come to the community and it's to develop um, the community. And it takes work. If you ask a person, I know Dan Portier stuck with it to the very, very end with the Community Development Corporation. And if you go back and, and talk with, with him about you know, that CDC, he can tell you what happened and the struggles and folks not seeing that patience, you've got to be patient. Things will happen, but they don't happen overnight. And right. that is the thing that we have to learn, that things are not going to happen overnight. And it's not what needs to be done, maybe something that's not going to put dollars in your pocket, but it's going to help the community. And that that's the only way that you have to be social justice again, socially minded, that I am here to help. This is going to help the community and will help you in the, in the long run as well. And I wanted to say something um, when we talk about, you know, um, the properties along the highway and, you know, who owns them and what have you. We have to look at, and uh, uh, again, the, along the line of social just, justice, we have to look within our families. Families have to sit to the table. I don't care if I didn't talk to Joe for 99 years, but Joe's name is on this property. And if I don't get Joe to sign off on this property, we aren't going anywhere. Right. So that whole, that whole you know, dynamic of, of, of getting the family members to sit down and talk to each other. This is to benefit everyone. It's not just to benefit a few. You will see the, the total picture once you get started and get into it. Yes, it is going to cost you probably attorneys, and this is the kind of things we should be looking at. Are there programs that pay for the attorneys? you know, that these families are, have to use. Because nobody's that rich that they got money that they can just throw around to attorneys. You know, is there some kind of grant that we can get that will pay the attorney's fees that for what we need to have attorneys do, uh, you know, when it comes to this property? And I would tell everybody who has property and who's dealing with property, get a real estate attorney. Get an attorney that knows real estate when you're doing your closings or whatever action, your titles, get a real estate attorney and be able to understand that that is an expense you may have. 
so that you are covered and everything is explained to you. Um, you dealing just with Joe Blow? No, Joe Blow may have a whole lot more knowledge than you do and a whole lot of more tricks in the book, in the bag, you know, than you do. So I, my thing to everybody is to get yourself an attorney right. and particularly one that knows real estate when you are dealing with selling these properties. And let's go back to the CRA for a minute. Uh, we need a CRA here in District 2. We really need a CRA and all of the millions of dollars that they spent over in District 1 since it was formed, I believe, in 1999. Yes. Up until this very date, I mean, on the beach and, and, and on up until this day, and you and, and I spoke with Commissioner Preston uh, about this, and then you go up to Delray Beach, and then as soon as you exit east on uh, Atlantic, and you go east, and you see all the beautiful lights and the paper bricks, and yes. the, how they built the nice buildings up. Right. And, and if we want people to invest in District Two, when they get off of I ninety five or the Turnpike, and they're coming down Hillsboro or Tenth Street, and they see all of these beautiful lights, and they see all these nice sidewalks and palm trees they'll be more inclined to come here and spend uh, and, 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 and form a business here in Deerfield Beach. And, and it's very important that uh, I think that we get a, dis, uh, a CRA in District 2. And I think that Commissioner Preston is, is, is doing the right thing. Uh, we, it, it's, I understand they may leave some money on the table and everything, but we need to get a CRA over here in District 2, and we need it bad. Uh, we needed it when it was posed to us back, you know, when Rodney was here. It's getting the community to understand why the CRA is so important, why, what it does for the district. What we had was monies that came in and did facade um, uh, changes to businesses, you know, built up, gave them monies to do the fronts of their buildings, like uh, when... Um, was it pick and pay? Not not pick and pay. food bazaar. That's how food bazaar got, you know, redone uh, on the outside was with monies that were that we had it in the in the, that came down and was given to them at that time. Yes, we do need a CRA, but that is in the county is the linchpin, you know, with the CRA, right. and hopefully um, there will be put together. Uh, a plan uh, that the, the county will accept right. and that the city will be willing to take those dollars and right. put over in the CRA. We, we know our taxes will go up if, if, if there's a CRA um, that we can get a CRA in district. So we know our, we don't mind paying more taxes. Um, me, well, I'll speak for myself and I've spoken with my brother. We don't mind if, if, if it's going to increase our property value. Yes, and we might be paying a little bit more in taxes, but look how much better our district would look. Our property values would go up. Uh, and, and and again, we need that CRA over here in Deerfield. We all need to work together collectively to do whatever we have to do to bring that CRA over here to Deerfield Beach because whatever they, they've been doing in the past, it hasn't worked. And, and no, it has not. being left behind, and we need to play catch up. We know we're way behind these other districts here. And and you know the the but the, you heard the problems that we are facing. That seventy percent of the homes in um, poverty in part of the district are renters. Rentals. Their their yeah. owners are not, and that is the problem. The owners do not live in the in the community. So those homes, they're not concerned about when we talk about CRAs and what have you. All they're concerned about is that I'm getting my rent. And a right. lot of them are Section 8. And that Section 8 money, you know, is, will come regardless. Um, yeah. So that is, that is a, a, a big problem, is getting the owners of the properties to uh, sign off on what it is that we want to do. Um, I, I don't know, you know, how we, how we do that. Uh, we, we will start, of course, I'm sure by getting in touch with them. And a lot of them are, don't live in, live in this, don't even live in the state. Right. Are out of state folks. So, um, they, they don't see the value 
of uh, a CRA um, because, you know, what is it going to do for them? The first thing they're going to ask you, what is it going to do for me and my, um, my house that I own here um, with, with, uh, with, with, as far as I can see, you're going to raise my taxes. That, you know, I've, I've heard that. I've heard that. They're out of, out of state. Um, you know, I'm getting, I'm out of state. I'm, they're sending me my section eight dollars. You know, the checks are coming, um, every month, you know, paying the rent and that's all I'm interested in. I'm not interested in, in anything else, you know, with Deerfield, except that I get my check every month from, from the house I own, uh, through the section eight. So we've got some, we've got some real, uh, issues, um, yeah, we feel very, you know, much forceful about wanting the CRA, but there's some some hills to climb, right? Uh, yes. uh, you know, to get to that. Yeah. yeah. And also, I saw an email the other day where the mayor of Deerfield said that people, some of us who spoke the other night, he was he did not specify, but he said that some people that spoke was against uh, the projects on uh, MLK. And I'm trying to figure out, former state rep, do they call make, taking four lanes into making it into a two lane road again progress? Because I don't know who he was talking about, but I got a good feeling he was talking about me because I spoke out against the four lanes, I mean, uh, from four to two lanes one time. But he said that, that you know, there was no progress. That, that, that stopped progress from four lanes got down to two. <laughs> you know, I don't understand his rationale. I'm gonna talk, to, I'm gonna talk with him whenever I get a chance, uh, but. Okay, because I spoke out against it also. I spoke so out against I. changing um, that the, the configuration of that street uh, what I truly am don't like, I wanted some street lights on the street, but the number of lights that they put on the um, on the road just seemed to be over overwhelming as far you know to the to the to the area. But um, we needed the lights. Yes. We definitely need. It was a, very dark over there. Yes, we definitely need the lights. Right. But um, I just. Figured, kind of figured that they could have spread them out a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's so many, but um, we got them and uh, we'll 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 work with it. Right. But um, that roadway should never be um, changed from a four lane to a two lane road. No, it should not. It, no, it, should not. It, it 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 will not enhance the area. It will. Um, they talking about uh, uh, doing something at 10th Street to the entrance of, of, 10th, of MLK at 10th Street. Um, I don't know what they're talking about doing there, but um, it should not, that road should not be uh, changed to a four lane, uh, from a four lane road. No, that uh, would you back to buses, the 80s. You've got the school buses, you've got the parents picking up the children. Do you see how those parents pick up those children? Yeah. Yes, it's crowded now. Okay, it's crowded now. all right. And uh, uh, so, you know, the, 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 that I thought we had settled that issue, that that road was not going to be changed to from a uh, to a two lane road. I think that that thought that issue had had been settled. If it's coming up again, well, hey, we'll have to speak out against we'll, it. We'll address again. it again. If it comes up, then we'll address it again because That's we do right. not. The, we the taxpayers over here. We the people don't want that. Yeah. Right. And you spoke up before uh, about not um, not wanting it, um, about, about beautification. But um, I wanted to get into um, the school board. You know, um, they had a survey that was out asking the parents, you know, how did they want their children um, to be educated here in this next school year? Unfortunately, uh, the city's um, education advisory has not met, and I hope I'm going to be speaking to um, Vicki uh, Picard tomorrow 
uh, asking why, I had asked before, why couldn't the committee have a Zoom, Zoom meeting? Why aren't the committees able to have Zoom meetings so we can talk and have some input because the school board is going to come to the cities and they're going to ask for certain things because the way they are talking about implementing the next school year, they are going to need help from, um, from the cities with some of the things that have to be done. So I, we have not heard from our school board representative. Uh, I don't know where she is. Um, who is she? Uh, who is our school board rep? I, I'm, um, I'm not off the top of my head. I can't remember her name. I can see her face. I can't remember her yeah, name. Yeah, me either. I, I, I really don't know. I, I should know that, but I, I, I'll i find out. I know, who, I know who it is. I just can't. Her name does not. Isn't that right. crazy? Right. Nora Rupert. Nora Rupert. That's what I got. Nora Rupert. Nora Rupert. Right. Yep. Nora Rupert, uh, you know, I haven't, I have, have not seen her or heard from anything from her. Well, we'll reach out to her. We'll do, trust it. We'll, the Adams Brothers podcast will reach out to her and we'll bring her on. And, uh, and if you'd like to come on with us and then, uh, you know, it's all fine. Commissioner, Pre Commissioner Preston, anybody that wants, you know, to come on, we'll, we'll try and set it up. And, uh, well, you know, she needs to, she needs to be on. She needs to hear uh, from her. You hear from her because um, the mayor, has not had a good feeling about, you know, her as, uh, from what I understand, um, Ben, they don't have a close relationship like uh, politicians should, I think, who are representing your city. Um, she's not, she has not been responsive to uh, Deerfield at all. Well, and, that's the type of politician and, we might need to vote out then. Yeah. And we, we need to be, be talking about um, what's happening finding out exactly what's happening uh, with our, our schools and what is it, and you know, hearing from the from our parents. I don't know if they're communicating, and I'm trying to find out, communicating with the parents um, via email or over the phone. I know that uh, they, they do have a call, way of calling the parents, you know, and uh, informing them, but I, I really want to know what is going on with uh, Deerfield Park, Ridge Deerfield Park, and um, Deerfield Elementary? Deerfield, uh, you know, um, as far as the schools are concerned. And um, I, I, I'm going to be asking Vicki, I, I, I'm not pleased with a lot of information that I'm getting, um, the way it's being handled, the way information is being put out to the community. Right. And, you know, when the observer closed down, I was hoping that some folks would come together, form a corporation and go in there and buy up whatever they needed to buy up and, and run a newspaper. Well, you because, have it right uh, here. You have it right here. We're on the case right now, the Adams Brothers Podcast. We, we, you know, we, uh, we, need, we need a news, a way of communicating to this community. The Pelican does not cover Deerfield the way right. Observer did. Right. And, um, we need to to have some kind of of uh you, you know if you start out with a one page flyer however but something out to the people so they know that they're alive and we know they're alive and uh we're communicating with them well this video is going to go out go up on youtube for millions of people to see and on facebook for all of our friends and uh uh, all of your friends, uh, you know, on Facebook, so they'll all be able to uh, view this entire interview. And yes, and this and this is what we're talking about coming together. Um, you know, if there's a group of people that have the wherewithal to run a newspaper, then step up and let us know who you are, and let us get together and and see what we can do. Because I'm telling you, it 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 really really um, hurts me to know that there are people that are not getting any information, that there are people who cannot get on a computer, um, there are people who just don't have it, can't do anything. And we don't know that they exist or how to help them. So uh, until we know and they reach out to us, and I'm sure through this podcast, they know that they can, folks, although I'm not in office, it's not like I'm not in office. The phone continues to ring. And uh, I do have a business that I set up uh, uh, and just for this specific purpose, uh, GCR and Associates LLC 
to deal with the problems that we are having in the community, to, um, for people to be able to understand that they can come and speak out there will be no retaliation on these on folks because they everyone has a right to speak out. The man on the street, the man under the tree, everybody has a right to speak out. And 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 I don't want I don't want folks to to under, to feel that they can't speak out in this city. That has been a problem. Yes, it uh, has. It has been a problem when people speak out there seems to be some retaliation. No, don't retaliate on me. Get in and find out why I'm telling you this. Well, they want to discredit you, number one. They don't want to come after you and discredit right. you. That's right. Don't discredit messenger. me. Because if I'm seeing it and I'm feeling it, somebody else is seeing it and feeling it also. And you who have control need to know. Right. Yeah, and, 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 and that is something that, um, you know, I always had an open door policy. Always, anybody could call me. I don't care what they used to call me when I was on the League of Cities, they used to call me from everywhere across the United States asking about Deerfield and what is going, you know, what's happening in Deerfield at that time. So I, I still feel that, you know, folks, uh, you're talking about what it is that we don't like and we don't want. We don't want you to discredit us when we come to you and say to you, listen, this is what's going on. And or this is what I see that we need. Don't look at me sideways. Find out what it is I'm talking about. And if it can be changed, it needs to be changed to the betterment of the community, then let's get in here and do it. Right. You know, we have to get the folks who are not able, who want to speak out, but are afraid to speak out, please. This is not the time to be afraid. That won't ever happen here on this yeah. podcast. It never, yeah, it's ever. not something that's in my vocabulary. Right. Everybody, it won't ever happen here. I know. I know. Every time, every time I send emails up to City Hall State Rep, I feel like when the email come back, it's like the politician up there take it personally. Uh, they try to be condescending in their emails back to you. It's almost like insulting in a way. And I think that attitude needs to change because it's, it's, it's like you send attitudes up. It's like you send emails up and they almost like use words on you like victim mentality. Uh, like we're begging for something or we're not paying that much in taxes so we don't deserve to get anything. Right. And you didn't, have, you like, didn't do enough. You didn't do enough over there. You're yeah. not doing enough. Well, that and that's something that 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 we have to, and that is a part of this the whole the, the protest again. Why do you think I wanted you all to go between City Hall and BSO when we went on the protest? Okay, uh, you had to understand that the what was going on in City Hall is something that that has to be changed. There's 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 a, a current there, you know, feeling that I'm, I'm, you're just not, the community is just not pleased with. You're like, I hear someone said to me, it's like they turn off the, like you open the water faucet and then they turn, they turn it right off. It's, yeah. you know, and that's how they think your, your feelings should be. When you are an elected official, you are there as a public servant. It is not a personal vendetta or whatever, and it should not be taken back on the community personally. Right. You live in the community too. You you see what's going on, what we're talking about. So don't get there and try and act like you don't know what we're talking about, right. you know. And and come back with a, a, a something that's like a smart alecly, um, you know, response to something that that you are asking about. Asking about. And we get that a lot. We got that a lot when we work for the city. We both work for the city of Deerfield Beach for 25 years, and we retired from there. And I tell you, it's uh, it's always been that way uh, with the the Adams brothers and the Adams family. You know, when we own something, you know, they, they we get you know these emails that's you know that's like they don't want to respond back to us, and we shouldn't be asking these certain questions. It's always been that way. Yes, it has, and especially and lately. It hasn't just started. It's been going on for for quite a while, but that's never going to stop us. That just makes us go 
and look further and deeper into things. That's right. That's all that does. That's right. And we're that's not going anywhere. We're going to be here for a long, long time. So they may as well get used to it. Yeah. Well, listen, um, you know, um, I was telling someone that come October, I will celebrate my 80th birthday. God bless and, you. You know, and uh, I've been here in this city for a long time as well. Um, you know, when I, once I left New York and I came, uh, I came here, I knew this would be, you know, my home until the mm -hmm. Lord calls me. Right. And um, this is, you know, we have to stop this. We have to stop that attitude in City Hall. Um, it, it, this is something that, you know, we're not saying give me anything that I'm not deserving of or I shouldn't have, you know. Um, because I live where I live, I live there because I, this is where I can afford to live. If I wanted to go live over on the beach, then I would try and get one of them high mortgages and one of them mansions over there or whatever. No, but I chose, this is where I live. And it is a part of the city of Deerfield Beach, regardless right. of how much taxes I pay or I don't pay. This right. is how you guys have left my community. So this is how you get from what you get from my community. Yeah, and if we're all yes. one Deerfield, you get rid of districts and put the money all over the city. If that's the case, you know, get rid of districts. <laughs> if we're all one Deerfield, get rid of the districts. You know, uh, that that the the reason uh, single member districts were voted into here was so that the African American community would have some representation up in the in this city and be able to um to 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 deal with it i think i think that they forget that we know when we were asking about juneteenth um you know in the holiday that we don't remember that uh pioneer day as it has now become the known we knew it when it was cracker day it was cracker so day. they forget that we you know or the or they they don't want to understand that we understand you know the hist history here right. those of us who have been here know the history right and um so don't don't um don't try to put us off right deal with it right you know that, that you need to understand that most of the people that live here state rep and there are, are hard-working honest people everyone are not looking for a handout and i hope i'm speaking to a lot of white people right now because they think everyone, they think a good majority of us just want handouts all the time. No, we 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 work hard. We want we want to be treated the same, just like you said earlier, State yeah. Rep. We just want to be treated equally. We want to be treated the same. But don't think everyone over here is looking for a handout. And like you said earlier, if we do get the CRA back here, it's gonna everybody's gonna have. It's gonna be a a, a process. It's not gonna you know change overnight blight not gonna change overnight it's gonna take a lot of patience here but i just want them to know that we want the same thing they want we want clean neighborhoods we want crime-free neighborhoods we want the same thing everyone just don't want to live in blight over here and i think that you know i think sometimes they think that and that's why they don't want to put the money that's needed over here and that kind of attitude needs to stop that needs to stop and also that's they right. and, and if they really want if they don't want the cra over here then i would love to see the city council different city council commit to putting one million dollars for the next 20 years in district two alone i would love exactly. for them to see that if they don't want the CRA, give us a million dollars for the next 20 years, commit to it, to District 2. And if they really want to see some change, I, there it is. I'm putting it out there to all the commissioners and the different city council that's, that will be watching this, this podcast. The, commit a million dollars for the next 20 years to District 2. I challenge you to do it. Step up to the plate and let's make it happen. Well... If that, if that is uh, one of the, something that the community wants, then the community has to put it on record. And that's another thing. Um, at, at City Hall, when, when um, we were asking, I heard the mayor asking uh, the city clerk about minutes from the meetings or, or videos, you know, from previous meetings. And uh, she told them that they only kept them for two years and they discarded them. 
but they were able to go back eventually and find, uh, you know, recoup um, previous years, a uh, certain number of previous years minutes. This, this city never wanted, and I can tell you, they never wanted black folks to really understand what was what's going on. I'll never forget when I asked for some minutes of, a, of, of an event uh, from City Hall that I was given the tapes. And this was when, um, this is back when I was on the vision. I was given the tapes. And of course, at home I have, uh, you know, have the equipment to play the tapes and whatnot. When I got home, the tapes were blank. <laughs> blank. And uh, I'll never forget that. And, and that is something that is so important to this city that records are kept and they are kept correctly, that you can go back and find out what happened and know what happened and be able to then, you know, understand why things are the way they are today. So, uh, you know, the record keeping in this city has not been the best. Hopefully, uh, the mayor's got it under control now and it, it has changed. Um, when I was cleaning up the other day, I found information uh, from the first time that we told them about the Brunhilder and Richardson Knowles um, Memorial Park. property, Memorial Park, uh, that, it, that there were folks buried there and how um, they, you know, just wanted to brush it off. Um, unfortunately, and thank God that we were able to continue and stay on that. And that's what I'm talking about when you talk about perseverance and staying mm. on something. Right. We started that process back in, 19, in the 1990s. Uh, we started that whole process. And look, it took us until 2018 or 2019 to, to really finalize what has happened. So that's when I talk to, say to people, it's going to take a while. You're going to have to bear with the struggles. You're going to have to take the ups and the downs and people's looking at you like you're crazy, but you got to keep on persisting and staying on the task. Right. Then, okay. You know, keep, like we say, keep our foot to the pedal, right. keep your foot to the pedal and Absolutely. stay on it. That's uh, what we have to do. Keep yeah. the pressure on them. And we have about, uh, maybe about 10 more minutes. We have another interview. Uh, okay. we, I know you wanted to talk about two more things, info on the Broward Health Marketing Department and, and an upcoming Zoom meeting. Yes, um, the Broward Health Department has um, contacted me. I'm on the Community Relations Council there. And they contacted me about getting masks to give out in the community. Uh, masks and, um, and information about COVID-19. And I need to know, um, you know, are there organizations in the community that will be able to um, disperse these masks and the information that they want to get out as far as, um, you know, what's going on with the pandemic. So um, you have my phone number, 954-480-9340. It's 954-480-9340. You can call me in that number by, you know, there's the answering machine there answering on it, voicemail, and just leave me a message uh, and I will get back to you. And they'll be able to get your number off of the podcast when they view the video again. So it'll be, you put it on the record so they'll be able to get it off of there too. Right, right. right. And um, to understand... Um, that we may <clears throat> we have to work with those persons who are in office for the next three years now or four years and um understand that when you elect somebody to office that is the person that's there with the vote you may not like them you don't like the way they look you don't like how they stand up whatever forget that. That is the person that is there to cast that vote, making those decisions. Right. So, um, you know, it, it's, it, it may hurt you 
close your eyes, talk to them through, you know, whatever. But that is the person. You can't, you know, just say, oh, I'm not going to do it for the next four years. So for the next four years, we should let things just deteriorate? No, no. Um, when you, it's time to make a change, then you, you make the change if, you, if it's necessary. So um, I do want to say that um, childcare is one of the areas that's going to be very important. And childcare can access some of those CARES funding that's coming down from the county, uh, from the CARES Act. They will be able to, to uh, access some of the funds. And Amendment 4, that's the amendment that we voted for to give the felons the right to vote. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, DeSantis, the governor, has this uh, embark. Um, he uh, said they should pay before they can vote. Yeah, thing, and it's it's now going to be heard. Uh, it won't be heard before this election, but it will be heard on the day of the primary election. The federal government will uh, hear that case again, and hopefully that will be the end of it, that we will get the felons able to um, vote without having to pay the poll tax, as they were calling it, um, or the penalties. Um, <laughs> Uh, previous penalties. Um, Dara, uh, I'm very thankful that you allowed me to come on. I know you said you have another podcast that someone else will be coming on to do, but um, hopefully we'll be able to do this again Absolutely. and uh, make sure everybody you get your mask, wear your mask. It's not it's protecting the other person as much as it's protecting you. Uh, we are looking out for each other. Yes. Also, wash your hands. Soap and water is better than any of the sanitizers. Just wash, be sure that we, you know, we wash our, our, our hands and that we do the social distance, distance, you know, apart, staying apart. And that's very hard for our families right. because we have extended families and households. Nobody has a room that they can go into and be alone. That's right. So therefore, they should be wearing the mask. Yes. They should all be wearing the mask because they have to protect each other in that household. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, You're welcome to come back anytime. You have some information. You're more than welcome. Let us know. We'll be glad to let you come back on. OK. Thank you very so much. Enjoy. We've been talking to, we've been talking to uh, former uh, state representative uh, in District 92, uh, uh, Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn Clarkery, and she was also the uh, former city of Deerfield Beach Commissioner in District 2. And we want to thank you so much for taking your time out on a Sunday and then coming on the Adams Brothers podcast. You're welcome to come back anytime. We'll be more than happy to talk to you. Uh, and, and I know you have a birthday coming up, your 80th birthday bash coming up, you know, so enjoy yeah. it. And we wish you another 25 years, 30 years of happy healthy uh, years to come. And uh, thank you so much for coming on our podcast. Okay. Thank you guys for having me. And we will be talking. Yes. Thank you. I want this community not, don't you have the word fear in their vocabulary. There you right. go. They have, the there right. you they have the right to stand up and speak out. Right. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank have a good evening. Dad for me and your mom. Uh, we will. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. You too.